Hello and welcome to this third film about kinetics. It's specifically about the collision theory. Um, so that is to say a, uh, an idea that we have about what must be going on when things in general react with one another. And hopefully by the end of this film um, you'll know exactly what collision theory says about reacting particles and you'll have thought about what factors might affect reaction rates by thinking about the particles. Okay, so um, let's start off um, by looking at what has to happen for a reaction to occur. This is basically what collision theory is. Collision theory says that for a reaction to occur, three things have to happen. Okay, and those three things you probably remember from year 10, but perhaps you've forgotten it. Okay, in order for a reaction to occur, particles have to bump into one another, first of all. Okay, so you're not going to get two things reacting together if they're not in contact. They not only have to bump into each other, but they have to bump into each other with enough energy. And that's the activation energy that we talked about in the last film, okay, in that second film about kinetics. And they have to collide with each other in the correct orientation, okay. So um, perhaps two particles might react if they collide side by side, but not end to end. Okay, so three things have to happen. Particles have to collide with enough energy to react, that's the activation energy and in the correct orientation with respect to one another. Okay, there are four factors that can affect the rate of a chemical reaction. The next film is going to deal with explaining really precisely why these factors affect rate, so I'm not going to go into it a great deal here. Okay, but the four factors that affect rate are concentration, which applies more to solutions, and pressure which applies to gases, but they're very, very similar concepts, okay? They both deal with the amount of particles in a particular space, okay? The surface area of a substance will also affect the rate, so um, how finely divided it is, or in other words, the state of subdivision, so how finely it's been chopped up. Um, the temperature will affect rate, and the presence or absence of a catalyst, and maybe the type of catalyst you use might affect the rate as well. Okay, now <clears throat> when we come to explaining ourselves with these factors, which we're going to do in the next film, as I say, this is just an introduction, okay, just want to kind of stress the point that we are going to try and stick to a routine in our explanations so that we're making sure that our explanations are clear. Okay, we're going to try and mention what happens to the frequency of collision, so how often do particles collide, and if that changes, why does it change? Okay. And we're also going to look at what happens to the chances of a collision being successful. Okay, so in other words, what happens to the chances that when two particles collide, they'll have enough energy to react? And, well, we won't look too much about the orientation, um, but that is a factor that you can consider if you take the topic a little bit further. Okay, so two things we're going to look at frequency of collisions and the chances of a collision being successful or having enough energy. We're going to try and talk about each of those things and explain why we think that that change will happen. Okay, but as I say, that's going to be in the next film. I just really, really want to emphasize the fact that we are going to try and stick to this routine at all times, okay, so that we can get into a kind of, well, a routine of answering these questions in a clear logical way. Okay, so that's it for this film. The next one is about factors affecting rate where we'll look into these explanations in a bit more detail.